Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we have an interesting study on CAN Networks, General Motors 2011 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD with the 6 liter V6. Oh, customer complaint. Well, you said it all started with the traction control light, then it said service trailer brake system, then it blew apparently two fuses, 60 amp and a 40 amp, we replaced those. They're not blowing right now. And now the truck does not move. He doesn't even start. He's, he had to use the old school way of starting it. You know, with a, a push button on the starter control. Got it started. Doesn't go anywhere. He already replaced. He said this was the trailer brake control module. That didn't work and then this uh, goes in the steering column, maybe a steering angle position sensor. That didn't do anything. So parts cannon has been fired, at least uh, a few items. <laughs> so scan this thing for codes. And let's see. So in the engine we have one, two, three, four codes. Cruise control switch signal, that's history DTC, don't really care about that for now. Transmission's requesting the check engine light, and then we have this U0073 control module communication bus off. Okay, very relevant. And also lost communication with the BCM. So that's in the engine computer. Transmission lost communication with the engine computer. And then a U0121 BCM, lost com with trailer brake control module. Instrument plant uh, panel cluster, last come with body control system, keyless entry, theft deterrent, tire pressures. Okay, so we need to get into this network, pull up a wiring diagram, see how it's laid out, what's talking to what. So I did that. Here's page one. And here's our DLC. Then it splits off, goes to our vehicle communication interface. It does have the UE1 code, so that's it, it's equipped. Then goes to the BCM. Then we have this MYD code, automatic transmission control solenoid valve assembly. And the engine control module is down here, and that has a terminating resistor in it. Okay. So that's it for page one. Page two, you can see it goes off the page two, the transfer case shift control module. That's our guy here. This is a four wheel drive, I believe. We can always check the um, body codes. It says NQH or NQF. And do we see NQH or NQF on here? And P, N, T, N, Z. No, oh, maybe it's not a four wheel drive. I guess I don't see a four wheel drive switch. So we don't have transfer case. It was around electronic brake control module, EBCM. And then there's a resistor here. Okay, so JL1. Yes, we do have JL1. So it goes through the trailer brake control module and then to the data link resistor. So that's, we have to be very careful which things we do have on here and which we don't. Do we have a fuel pump flow control module? That's a gas 4.3 liter LY6. We do not have an LY6. So all we have is this trailer brake control module, EBCM, no transfer case, ECM. Okay, so we got the codes now. Let's unplug the scanner, plug in our breakout box, the Bob, and just measure the resistance on the network with the truck off. And also, he said the instrument panel cluster here is weird. You can see that fuel level gauge, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't.
So it started up that time and it stalled out. Okay. So let's shut the truck off, let it go to sleep, and get on this network. Okay, so breakout box is plugged into the DLC. I'm just checking that we have a good ground, 12 volts. So let's go to pin 6, make sure that's 0, pin 14, make sure that's 0. So the truck is asleep. Now we want to go across 6 and 14 and measure resistance. 40 ohms. That's not quite correct because <laughs> we're supposed to have 60. So there might be a short to ground or a slight short to ground somewhere in this network, either wiring or a module is pulling it down, either or. So now let's hook up the scope, turn the key on, and look at what the can high and can low are doing. All right, so scope is hooked up, and I got the ground on battery negative over there with the jumper because Bernie Thompson says always, always reference your scope to battery negative, because, especially when we're looking for some short or you know voltage drop. You want a good reference. It's not worth saving the time plugging into here when that could be misleading. <laughs> so let's turn the key on, see what happens. Uh, figure out where to put the key here. So right now we're at zero volts on both high and low. Wow, that really looks like a lot of things are wrong. You can see we're all over the place. Fuel gauge came up. Let's drop the time base down. So something's trying to talk, but obviously the network is completely down. And See, are the two wires shorted together? Sure looks like they are. So we're expecting, let's get a little different voltage scale here, a bias of two and a half volts and one should go up to three and a half and one should go down to one and a half. We don't have that at all. That's what we have. We have data packets. Like that, ringing. And our resistance was too low. So they are shorted together somewhere. So we need to go back to the wiring diagram. And, you know, what's the path of <laughs> least resistance, if you will, to track this down? So first thing I want to do is unplug the EBCM. That will eliminate this whole tree with the trail brake control module and that data link resistor and see if our resistance goes up to 120. So we have to kind of split the tree here and I'm just looking for modules that are easy to get to. So let's try that. And if you notice on here, we don't see EBCM. We see engine transmission, airbag, body control module, HVAC, instrument panel, keyless entry, radio, theft deterrent, tire pressure monitor, vehicle communication interface. We don't see trailer brake controller, we don't see the EBCM. So that's a good place to start. So the EBCM is under the truck, right here, and it has a uh, little red tab, move that out of the way. And then, uh, yep, push that, and the connector should slide right off. I see a lot of dielectric grease in there. Maybe someone's been here. <laughs> we don't know. And our network is back. All right. Now we should be able to start the truck. 
sweet. So got lucky there. <laughs> Let's do another full coat scan. And our network is looking great. Even with that terminating resistor lacking, you can see it's kind of fuzzy, but at least now we know that the problem is somewhere from here through this trailer brake control module to that data link resistor. So that's awesome, we eliminated most of the network, so we're almost done. All right, so here's a full code scan. Let's clear all codes read by code scan right now and see if the only thing it's fussing about is the ABS and the trailer brakes. So you, our network is doing great. Two and a half bias up to three and a half. Down to one and a half. Just zoom in here a little bit. So these levels, like I said, without the terminating resistor, it'll have an issue. And it kind of makes sense that the EBS module went bad because it blew those huge fuses. So something in there shorted. And that's my suspicion. We could jump uh, the pins, you know, basically go across the ABS module, eliminate it from the system and make sure the trailer brakes work fine. But that should be, um, you know, I think you'll need a new ABS module at this point. So the only codes left here is one in the transmission, 121. One in the BCM, lost com with the trailer brake control module because that's offline. So if we go to transmission, U0121, I'm not sure that is. I'm gonna try to clear it. Engine off, engine key on, yes. Okay, codes, no codes, okay. So, talk to the customer. The ABS module itself smells like burned, <laughs> so it, it, it did blow those fuses. There's massive current running through there at some point, so it just needs to be replaced, no question about it. And we'll order up a new one, program it in. This thing should be back on the road, but for now we're just, you know, he has to use the truck, so we're going to leave that unplugged and he'll at least be able to drive it around. But I think that's it for this one. So uh, once we get that new module in, we could do a follow-up, but thanks all for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Oh, don't cut anything. Oh, no. So we're back up to 120 ohms here. So that's uh, what we expect. Okay. That's the resistance in the computer. Oh. And uh, so once we get the new module plugged in and programmed, this will go back down to 60, and our network will okay. show the right signals. Oh, okay. So back on this Chevy Silverado with the EBCM that's burned up. Um, one thing that I didn't do last time, ran out of time, uh, what you want to do is if you suspect a module, you unplug it, that side of the network came back fine, right? We had 120 ohms resistance um, through the terminating resistor which is inside the engine computer. So what I want to do now is actually jump these pins, so 24 and 23 yellow and tan and then yellow and black and tan black 37 36 and make sure we have 120 ohms I'm sorry 60 ohms resistance so this data link resistor I want to check the rest of the network just to be 100% this is the only problem here we go we got 60 ohms so that looks good there's the connector with the jumped pins pretty easy to do with the AES wave kit. Last thing, let's plug in a scanner and make sure we can talk to this trailer brake control module and that we have no other faults. Then we'll take off the EBCM, the electrical part, and see what uh, blew up in there. 
All right, so here's the fault report. Now this is before clearing codes. Lost con with ABS, lost con with trailer brake control module, tire pressure sensor malfunction, and then the trailer brake control module is online and it has these communication faults, obviously. So we're in good shape. So we can just uh, clear DTCs here. And rescan it. And the only thing that should come up is lost come with ABS module. So the only two codes left in the trailer brake control module is system disabled, information stored and valid serial data received. But it is online. There you go. There's brake switch status. Awesome. So let's pop off the old EBCM, see what it looks like. Here is the EBCM. There's the part number, 2098021. And man, this thing smells bad. It smells like a piece of toast burnt to a crisp. That circuit board is completely gone. <laughs> it's black. That's right by the power pin. So whatever shorted out, shorted out pretty good. But we'll get a new one in and then we'll have to program it using the online GM uh, service site. Uh, we can do that, no problem. Pretty cool though. <laughs> That's a bleeder, 60 amp fuse right there. <laughs> Is that, yeah, I oh, can yeah. see, that would do her, yep. yeah.